Okay, good morning. Uh, so today we will see chapter seven, okay, part two. Okay, last week we have covered part one, but I didn't give you a puzzle video. Okay, so today I will cover the remaining of chapter seven and before we enter to the other chapters. Okay, so before I start, can you hear me? Can you see the slide? Uh, yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, we I don't know where, how long we can use this VBAX because recently they said we're going to limit, you know, really use to the maximum. So we are using VBAX because it can support more than 100, 100 participants at one time. And uh, since your class has uh, more than 100, 100 students, around 120, uh, so we're trying to use VPEX. Because Google Meet, you only can support 100. So previously, we have used Microsoft Teams. So if you are really VPEX having problem, we might shift to Microsoft Teams. Hopefully, it can still be okay until end of the until the end of next month okay so okay so go back to our lecture okay so we stopped here last week so we have seen uh, some introduction to hydraulics so uh, hydraulics has a lot of components involved uh, and we in part one we have seen some of the components uh, especially for the supply Okay, to the, the bottom most of the circuit, okay, the supply line. Okay, so the preparation of hydraulic, the filtration, and all the things that are related. Okay, so today we will see a few other uh, parts of uh, components related to supply. Okay, so uh, we will start with pumps. Okay, so pumps, uh, mostly we know. The function of pump is to transport uh, something from uh, from one one place to another place at a given rate. Okay, so that is what uh, pump is about. Okay, so the function of pump in hydraulic system. So hydraulic pumps, we call it as hydraulic pumps. Okay, so hydraulic pumps are practically convert energy from a prime mover. Okay, so it can be an engine, it can be an electrical motor okay, into hydraulic energy. Okay, so when you in your exam, uh, so you ask what is the function of pump, hydraulic pump. So you need to use the term hydraulic pump. Okay, so the conversion of energy energy, so from mechanical energy to hydraulic energy okay, so even though it's a pressure energy the pneumatic also uh, is creating a pressure energy okay actually but uh, pneumatic is not using pump is using a um, compressor uh, a pneumatic using compressor so hydraulic using pump so you need to get the terms clear so because if you didn't explain it properly, so I might minus mark. Okay, if you use the wrong terms. Okay, so you need to understand that. Okay, so the once you already convert it into hydraulic energy, so the pressure energy can be used to operate the other valve and also actuators. Okay, so this is the function of hydraulic pump. Okay, so principles, a pump push on uh, hydraulic fluid and create flow. Uh, so if you don't push something, uh, so you can, it cannot create flow. Uh, so pump uh, is used to push the hydraulic fluid. Okay, so hydraulic fluid we know is a oil kind of uh, liquid uh, used in the hydraulic system. Okay, so when you push the hydraulic fluid, it will start to create flow. And 
they operate on the displacement principle. So displacement meaning, so moving from one place to another place and fluid is taken in and replaced, displaced to another point. So uh, we will see later what type of uh, pumps available. Okay, so normally we have a uh, non-positive displacement and also positive displacement pump. Okay, so it's practically is uh, related to displacement principle. Okay, so the fluid is taken and transported to another place to start the hydraulic uh, uh, flow. Okay, so there are mainly two categories of hydraulic pump. Okay, the first one we call it as positive displacement and the second one is non-positive displacement. So this is a, on a similar like pneumatic. So pneumatic also we have positive displacement and non-positive displacement uh, compressor. Okay, so uh, for hydraulic, we are having the same kind of uh, categories. Okay, so we'll see each of the categories. So non-positive displacement pumps. So pumps that discharge fluid in a continuous flow. Okay, so meaning you have a fluid in. Okay, so you'll use a impeller or propeller to create a flow and move to the system. So when you have a propeller, so you can create a flow. Okay, so you can imagine. Okay, and uh, one advantage of this non-positive displacement pump, uh, so you can produce a continuous flow. Okay, so uh, we will compare with the positive displacement pump later, uh, how it can differ. Okay, for, for, for this, it, the fluid comes in, Automatically converted and sent out. So it's not uh, kept at uh, any place. Okay, so it uses an impeller or propeller to move fluid by momentum. So it will create a momentum in the fluid. Okay, so the example of a non positive displacement pump. So we have a centrifugal pump, a uh, propeller pump, uh, so used in a cooler pump or water pump on radiator cool engine. Okay, so you can see, if you want to get more info, you can check this in YouTube. Okay, so how the pump work, uh, so with the animation, okay, so I think uh, you can get more info. Okay, then uh, for positive displacement pump, a pump that causes a liquid to move by trapping a fixed amount of fluid and then forcing or displacing the trap volume into a discharge pump. Okay, so positive displacement pump. So earlier we saw non-positive displacement pump. So whatever fluids come in, so it just uh, change the momentum of the fluid and uh, send it out. It's not trapping. But positive displacement pump, once the fluid comes in, it will keep first. So once it achieves a certain amount, then it will create a force and send it up. That's the differences. Okay, that's why we say by trapping. trapping uh, once a uh, certain amount is achieved, then it will force the trap uh, volume to the discharge. Okay, so that's how uh, it works. So there are uh, three types of positive displacement hydraulic pumps. One is a geared pump, uh, one more is wind pump, and uh, the third one is the piston uh, type. Okay, so it's practically uh, the differences will be in the construction. Okay, so the mechanism used inside. Okay, so uh, for geared pump, you are using gear. For wind pump, we are using wind, and for piston pump, uh, you are using piston. Uh, so practically, the mechanicals inside that uh, are uh, different. Okay, so you will see. Okay, so the wind pump. So I just uh, explain briefly. Okay, what are the arrangement inside? Okay, so you have inputs coming in, okay, and you have a pump. So you can see here, 
so this is supply and uh, also the pressure yes uh, so once the hydraulic fluid comes inside so you have some space so you can see some space uh, okay, so what it does so the rotor has a permanent offset or eccentricity uh, so that as it turn okay so it will turn it will continuously turn because you can see you have space here at the sides okay so it will turn as the fluid comes in it will turn okay so the space between the wings get larger and then smaller uh, so it will become like a pulse okay so when it move to the right hand side uh, so the space will become uh, bigger or smaller okay so it, it is using the space concept okay in inside the body okay so the space between the veins get larger and then smaller okay when the space getting larger okay so when uh, the space getting larger so the oil is enters the uh, oil enters okay because more space okay, more space created uh, when more space created uh, your pressure will become low so from high pressure uh, it will move to low pressure so it will enter inside and when the space gets smaller okay so the oil is pushed up okay so it will create uh, high pressure inside and it will uh, push up okay so that's how the wind pumps work so it's practically using uh, space between the wings. Okay, so that's uh, one thing. Okay, then we have a radial piston pump on the rotor. Okay, so radial meaning uh, is in a rotation. Okay, so actually it's quite small, is a numbering. But you can just follow this numbering to check. We have some numbers here. Okay, so cam two. So cam two. Where is cam two? Okay, so this is a cam. You have a cam here. It's a part of the main shaft. So you have. Okay, it is attached to a shaft one, and when it rotates, the piston are made to reciprocate cylinder four. Okay, so you can see uh, this whole thing is inside here. Okay, so you have uh, three sides. Where is number four? Okay, so number four. Okay, when it moves, so it will draw oil inside. Okay, so you have some uh, radial line. Okay, when piston moves inward. Okay, so you have a piston inward uh, inside. The space in the cylinder filled with oil through the suction valve seven. Okay, so when the piston moves, okay, when the piston moves, oil uh, draws inside. Okay, the blue color is oil. Okay, so you can see here uh, in the bigger picture, the so oil is entering here inside. Okay. Seven and then suction port. Yes. And C S. This is uh, but it's practically when uh, the space is created in the piston, so the oil will come in. So uh, all these uh, pumps are using high and low pressure conversion. Okay, when uh, the pressure is low inside, so the outside pressure will be higher so the uh, the fluid will move from high to low pressure so it's using the same concept okay when the piston moves outward so when the piston moves outward the okay, oil is trapped inside is forced out to the pressure port okay so you have uh, pressure ports okay, so you have uh, three pressure ports okay so when okay uh, but you can see only one outlet 
so pi is all connected all connected so it will draw the fluid in and it will send to the pressure pump okay, so that's how a radial piston pump works and the third one is the gear pump okay, so gear pump is, uh, is using gear system inside the gear system inside Okay, so construction will be like this. So you have uh, two mesh gears inside. Okay, so when uh, this gear moves clockwise, the other gear will move counterclockwise. So it will create a space in between. Okay, so that's why, that's why you can see there's a space in between. Okay, so uh, the oil will be draw in and fill filling the space and uh, it will be pushed up. Okay, so will be uh, have some reading. So the input shaft three. Okay, you have an input shaft uh, three here. It carries a driving gear. So you have a uh, driving gear inside. Okay, that turns the idler gear. Okay, so you have two gears. Okay, number seven and number eight. So this is connected to this. And this is practically a follower. Uh, idler means uh, is uh, resting, so no mechanism. So it's only connected to the, this gear. All from suction port S. Okay, so you have a suction port S. So meaning the oil uh, inlet is carried around in the space between the gears and the pressure port. Uh, so it's using the uh, space between the gears to fill the oil gear mesh and form a barrier so the oil is faster so after some time so no more space and it will be pushed up so that's how the yes. gear pumps work you can ask a question uh, yes. okay for azim you have any anything to say yeah, uh, so we looked at all these types of gear can, but they all seem to like be an obstacle for the liquid. Is that because they want to make the pressure of the liquid stronger when it comes out? Yeah, it's actually uh, pump's function is to create pressure uh, in the flow line. Uh, so similar like pneumatic, we cannot just have a normal air without the pressure. So the the pumps, their main function is to create pressure, uh, so that uh, the hydraulic fluid can be moved from one point to another point. So all this mechanism, actually, if you see all these gears, so we have seen the vein pump, and the radial pump, and also uh, the gear pump, is all using the space uh, principle. So when you have more space, it will create more oil to enter, and after some point, so it will uh, start to push up. So when uh, we see the wind, so it has a space because of the winds, and radial also because of the piston. The movement of the piston will draw uh, will create more space in, inside and also gear it, it has uh, some space and that can be utilized uh, so all these uh, pumps are using uh, the extra space uh, theory in order to create the uh, pressure all right sir. i think i get it okay. any other question Okay, so you don't have okay. So advantage of positive displacement pumps. Okay, so you can see uh, some of the advantages. Okay, so they can operate at a very high pressure, up to eight hundred bars. Okay, so pneumatic normally will be ten bars, but hydraulic it can uh, operate at a very high pressure. Okay, 
ये वेरी सो एट हंड्रेड बा इज वेरी हाई प्रेशर ये सो आह ये इस आह वन ऑफ द एडवांटेज ला ओके सो इट कैन बी यूज्ड एट अ वेरी हाई प्रेशर यूज्ड फॉर लिफ्टिंग ऑयल फ्रॉम वेरी डीप ऑयल वेल सो आइड्रोलिक प्रिंसिप इज यूज्ड फॉर ऑयल the boring of oil uh, so because you know so when they want to take oil from petroleum okay so petroleum oil from the petroleum base so you need to dig very deep into the sea then you need to take the oil from the bottom of the sea uh, so you need to have a strong uh, very high pressure uh, operation in order to Take out the oil. So oil surely will be heavy, and it's at a very deep place. Uh, so we have uh, learned from uh, from a thermal fluid that as it goes deeper, so the pressure will be very high. Uh, so you need to create a high low. You need to play around with the high and low pressures in order for the oil to Come out uh, naturally, uh, so that's what they are doing at this uh, oil wells. Okay, so there's uh, one advantage. The second advantage is they can achieve a high volumetric efficiency of up to ninety-eight percentage. So volumetric efficiency meaning so you are utilizing the volume, and you can use up to ninety-eight percent. So that's why I say. So volume, so volume is creating a space. It creating a space uh, inside the pump, so you can use up to efficiently up to ninety eight percent of the pump's capacity. So it is quite good. Okay, they are highly efficient and almost constant throughout the design pressure range. Okay, so normally when you want to do some operation or some system. You will have a pressure range. Okay, so this system can operate from this pressure range to this pressure range. Okay, so uh, hydraulic uh, pump, so they are highly efficient okay, and almost constant uh, throughout the uh, pressure range. Okay, these are some of the advantage of the positive displacement. So they are compact unit having a High power to weight ratio. So, meaning you can create high power even though the size is smaller. You can obtain a smooth and precisely controlled motion. Okay, so hydraulic. One of the advantage of hydraulic system is it's a very precise. Okay, so if you need precision. So you can consider using a hydraulic system. Okay, by proper application and control, they produce only the amount of flow to move the load at the desired velocity. Okay, so you can by applying a proper application and control. Uh, so you can produce a required flow. Okay, so for any any operation. So moving one load, uh, okay, and you also can control the speed or the other the velocity. Okay, the velocity of the load. Okay, so velocity of the load you can control by controlling the flow. So you can control the flow rate. So so many things can be done. Okay, so they have a great great flexibility of performance. They can be made to operate. Over a wide range of pressure and speed, the, uh, this is one of the advantage, lah. Okay, because when a system can operate at a wide range of pressure and speed, the so meaning you can do a lot of stuff. Because most of the application around uh, around us, so we are playing around with pressure and speed. So at times you need higher pressure. Uh, at times you need to have a higher speed. Uh, so when you have this kind of flexibility, uh, so you can do a lot of operation. So that's the advantage, lah. Okay. 
if any question so far that the solan i hope you you all can understand mm, that yes huh? yeah? no 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 question okay so we will see a few more slides before we take uh, five take a break for five minutes uh, so before that i think i will cover a few more slides okay, so we know hydro uh, hydraulic oil is the main fuel used in the hydraulic system okay so I, uh, we call it as a hydraulic oil okay, so hydraulic oil it has some function uh, it has some uh, tasks to do so you, as you can see here, it has a primary task and it also a secondary task. Okay, and it has a certain qualities of oil that can be used. Certain qualities you cannot use. So you will see clearly uh, one by one. Okay, so and uh, this can be, uh, it's like a popular question also in uh, uh, tests or exams. Okay, so you can. Uh, Pay some attention to this part. Okay, so the hydraulic oil. So the primary task of the hydraulic oil. Okay, so the main thing is power transmission. Okay, so you want to transmit a pressure or motion. Uh, so this uh, hydraulic system. You want to use hydraulic system to do work. Okay, so if you want to do work, you need to play around with your pressure and also motion. Even like a piston, the normal uh, design that you design using fluid sinks, so you are playing around with piston or rotary motors. So meaning it is dealing with uh, motion. How the motion is created by playing around with the pressure. So, uh, so the main function of hydraulic oil is for power transmission. And then you also want to. Transmit signal. So, like how you saw in the lab, so signals are given. If both sides having signal, it create a signal overlap. So, you want to control the signals for uh, for the wall. So, that's the function of hydraulic wall. Uh, so, you are giving signals. Just if you want a valve to be activated. So you need to send a signal. How you can send signal? You send a hydraulic oil to that particular valve, to that particular port. So that's how you can uh, provide a signal transmission for control. Okay, so these are two primary tasks of hydraulic oil. And the secondary task, the secondary task means uh, it's not the main task, but it does along the way. Uh, to get something in. So in Malay, we call it as to get something in. Okay, so the first one is lubrication of uh, rotating and translating components to avoid friction and wear. So you want to produce uh, lubrication okay, because, uh, because due to friction. Because inside, whenever you have motion, when you have motion, automatically it will start to have friction or something. So lubrication helps in reducing or avoiding friction. So if you have a layer of oil in between, it will be smooth. So nowhere. So you can't say nowhere, uh, but it will take some time to for uh, for the hard to have uh, wear or tear. So if, uh, how to say in our word, uh, so kalau satu alat tu, you boleh guna dua tahun. So because of the lubrication, uh, you boleh gunakan lima tahun. Uh, so you, if you can increase your the lifetime of your component, uh, so indirectly you are reducing cost. Uh, so that's the one advantage. Lah. Okay, so that's why lubrication is very important. Okay, so the second one, so heat transport away from the location of heat generation, usually into uh, the reservoir. 
as we have seen last week, so how it must be avoided in hydraulic hydraulic system uh, because you are using oil, oil somehow it will start to burn and it will cause fire. Okay, so once you detect a heat generated in a, a particular location, uh, you need to transport the heat. Uh, so normally we will send it back to the reservoir. So reservoir, we know uh, at the sides we have a steel plate where uh, the heat transfer happens. Kalau detect cepat cepat antara ke reservoir for the heat to be dissipated, to be released to the environment. So that's another secondary task. So the third secondary task is to transport of particles to the filters. Okay, so we have seen uh, inside the hydraulic oil, we shouldn't have any particles. Particles, it can be uh, from the work or the friction, about uh, geseran, other serbo inside inside the hydraulic oil. Uh, so, hydraulic oils must be clear. So you cannot have any contamination. You cannot have any dirt inside. You cannot have any particles. Uh, particles are certain benda-benda yang kecil lah, benda-benda yang halus. So you cannot have anything inside uh, because it will cause uh, damage to your component, to your valve, to your actuators. So, uh, similar like it, if the particles are detected, immediately you need to transport the particles to the filter. Look, filter, they can filter, uh, filter out the elements or the particles. Okay, so, that's another secondary task. The fourth secondary task is the protection of surface from chemical attack, especially corrosion. Corrosion, one of the way to avoid corrosion is by uh, lubrication. Okay, so chemical attack. Chemical attack can be any chemical because hydraulic oil, so practically, is still a chemical. So chemical, and because of the chemical, so you can have reaction. Kalau uh, tiba-tiba it lalu something, katakan that the place is uh, is uh, like copper. So copper, maybe it can react with hydraulic oil. So it, once it reacts, so it can produce a copper oxide or copper copper dioxide or something, uh, which can uh, cause changes in the chemical reaction. It's okay, so a chemical reaction, so we call it as a chemical attack. So chemical attack is not handled properly, it will create a problem like corrosion. Imagine what will happen if corrosion happens inside. It will form a layer uh, of oxide and um, the, your system will not become efficient after some time. Tiba -tiba ada bunyi, tiba -tiba are stuck. Uh, so uh, your whole operation will, will have problem. Always we expect uh, something to uh, move smoothly. Cuba uh, bayangkan, your car suddenly have corrosion inside your engine. What will happen? Yeah. Yes, first of all, I, I can't hear you. I'm sorry, the mic was far away. If this corrosion in the car engine, the car yeah. move with me. Yeah, so when you have corrosion inside your car, you always imagine your hydraulic system as your one example is your car. Uh, so what will happen if all these things are available in your car? So tiba tiba ada heat, tiba tiba ada particles in, in your engine oil. So engine akan rosak. Corrosion will cause a, a lot of damage. After some time, you can use your car. So you need to send to a mechanic, you can avoid work oil, you can tuka minya. So a lot of stuff. So all these things are quite important. Okay, so that you need to check. Okay, so hydraulic fluid requirements. Okay, what are the requirements? 
Dia similar like your oil, uh, your car oil. Uh, selalunya ada kalau you biasa buat maintenance lah or servicing for your car. Okay, so minyak minyak yang you gunakan dalam kereta. So the fluids that you use, brake fluid, uh, engine fluid, automatic transmission fluid, a lot of fluid. All this fluid has its own requirement. You cannot simply put any uh, brake oil or any engine oil to your system. Okay, so normally, kalau you biasa guna tukar, uh, your oil, uh, the engine oil will have some specification. Uh, so fully synthetic oil, semi-synthetic oil. Yeah, yang tu pun ada numbering dia. 5W30, 5W40. So that's are the requirements. So you need to read your manu your car manual to check. Okay, for this car, so what type of oil you need to use? So some cars requires coolant, coolant uh, for you to put together with the engine oil. Uh, so ada banyak benda lah yang you kena uh, check. Okay, so hydraulic fluid it has a requirement. Okay, and you need to meet the requirement if you want to use the system for a longer term. Kalau you nak just gunakan satu bulan, you can ambil lah. So any, I think you can use one month. But normally, this hydraulic system or pneumatic system, you want to use it for a long run. Okay, like 10 years. Okay, so try to think how I can maintain this system for another 10 years. So these are the requirements. One of the requirement is to use a proper hydraulic fluid. Okay, so uh, functional. So before you choose, to make sure it provide a good lubrication characteristic. Okay, so it must produce a good lubrication. Okay, the viscosity should not depend strongly on temperature or pressure. Uh, meaning a uh, temperature or the pressure chain shouldn't change the viscosity. Kalau you nak tukar minyak dekat motor ataupun kereta, you see the the oil will have some viscosity. Uh, it won't be too smooth uh, macam petrol ke ataupun kerosene. Uh, so dia macam air kan. So normally this oil will have a, a certain viscosity, the liquid. Uh, so it's not the uh, tachaye though. Uh, so it will have some kind of viscosity, and you need to make sure that uh, changes in the temperature because after some time, uh, engineer on to Jalan, uh, let's say you are going to Kanga and come back. So in your, after some time, your engine will become panas, and uh, because of the change in temperature. So pressure also indirectly will be affected. So you need to make sure that oil will not change, the viscosity of the oil will not change when the temperature or pressure change. Uh, if extreme, maybe it will, it, again, it will change less. Uh, but normally, normal uh, nominal uh, operation. Uh, so you shouldn't change. Okay, and it also must produce good heat conductivity. As I said earlier, it is not good for the system. So you need to have uh, oil that conduct it efficiently. Meaning it will not cause harm la, to the uh, oil. So, uh, uh, always will be it uh, related to fire. If it has a low heat conductivity, fire can happen instantly. So, if you have a good heat conductivity, uh, it can withstand certain temperature. It can under 20 degrees. So under 20 degrees uh, normally will not be achieved. Uh, so, if under the, the heat conductivity is under 20 degrees, meaning until under 20 degrees, fire will not happen. So, it will protect your system. Like, Mura. Same same type of uh, characteristic, tapi minyak murah. Uh, tengok tengok, e conductivity is not good. Uh, e conductivity instead of 120, 
hanya boleh tahan uh, until 40 degree. 40 degrees is it can be easily achieved after some time. Kalau engine you uh, on for some time or your pump on for some time, uh, 40 degree. Tiba tiba you think of kereta you terbakar. It because it's not having a good heat on that time. Okay. The low heat expansion coefficient, uh, so this is something related to heat juga. Conductivity meaning it can conduct heat. So heat expansion coefficient, uh, so meaning your heat will cause some expansion in the fluid. So you, you shouldn't allow a lot of expansion. Lah. So when the heat expansion coefficient is low, uh, meaning your your oil will be same almost uh, always so it's not uh, varying over time or varying over a certain temperature range okay last elasticity modulus elasticity meaning it can be expandable expandable in terms of can be used a longer or you can have a better chemical uh, compounds inside so to provide a good elasticity the elasticity normally uh, uh, kita can test uh, you just take the oil in between your thumb and also your left finger so you take and then you think of whether it's elastic or not and that's how we test the viscosity also. So if uh, it stick longer between your thumb and your index finger, uh, so meaning is having a good viscosity and also elasticity. So you these are some requirements that you need to have between uh, for selecting your hydraulic fluid. Okay. So this is on the functional side, on the economic side. So make sure low price, low price, not necessarily allow low price to cheap quality. Uh, so at times you can have a lower price uh, for a good product. Just you can achari lah. So normally uh, when you are buying a hydraulic system or pneumatic system, we just assign all these things to vendor. As an engineer, the, the industry, uh, you are responsible when you want to buy something. Don't always depend on vendor. Kalau vendor, dia nak makan more money, right? Uh, so they try suggest buy this, buy that, buy this, buy that. Uh, then uh, overpricing can happen. So instead of you paying under ringgit for one valve, you end up paying 500. Uh, so they untung paratus. Uh, so, so don't make sure you know what you are doing. Uh, so that's what I'm trying to say. Like, uh, as an engineer, you must know. Okay, you need to select, customize. So you check out. Okay, so I already tested the system with fluid same. So I think this thing will work. So this thing will work. Uh, so try to do some market survey. So don't always depend on other person la, to decide for you. So that's what I'm trying to say. Be a good engineer. Okay, so uh, Unimap we try to make you a good engineer. So until pergi ke industry, you don't totally depend on your manager. Ataupun, so manager dia nak bagi kat Rune dia. Uh, and ada kawan dia, ada supplier, dia dapat commission. Uh, so the you is like insisting or oh, you buy from me, buy from me. But I'll, you are the better supplier with a better competitive price. You better buy from me. Um, so you can always say in your board meeting, no, I think uh, this price is uh, overpriced. This component is overpriced by this vendor. So why not we use uh, this component uh, from this vendor? It will produce the same result. So that's how you can win the argument in your board meeting. Okay, so try to be a good engineer. Lah. That's what I try to ask. Okay, so don't be a lousy engineer. I always follow people, always uh, don't know 
kan? Tu, pasti some of mostly lah, mostly ini map students who work as engineer industry. So they always have a good reputation lah. So try to maintain that. Yes, so we have a very strong connection. So that's why last year our employability rate is ninety eight percent. In Maksudnya, 98% of the students graduated are employed by companies. Yeah, after six months, after six months of your graduation. Uh, so that means uh, the industries have a very high research about Unimap products. So you all are Unimap product. Later you, uh, of course, like after diploma, you will study degree. After some time, you will go to work in industry. Kalau you tak jadi academician macam saya lah. Kalau jadi academician or you start your own business, that's different track. But if you work as an engineer in the industry, uh, so make sure you know what you do. Jangan pergi tak tahu buat apa-apa. Then they will be, you expect everything to be taught, uh, teach you. So nanti uh, pergi ke uh, ni, so technician pun tengok apa lah engineer ni. Uh, I technician, because technician is diploma level. So if you become engineer, uh, after you finish your degree lah. Uh, you masuk ke industry, so last class technician uh, need to teach you. Because technician dekat industry, they are very good. Uh, they memang ada banyak experience. Uh, because they are more practical people, right? So they are dealing with all the system, machines, uh, devices, walls, uh, So if you don't know something, then you'll see. Apa lah you remember engineer? Jangan macam tu. So try to be carry the weight lah of the engineer. Engineer is a very noble work because we are we are what to say? We are solving problems. So engineers are problem solvers. Papa, the cat, the cat industry had a problem, they will call the particular engineer to solve. So you are problem solvers, you are actually helping a lot of people. So try to carry the weight, la. be proud to be an engineer. So that's one thing. La. We are out of topic. That's uh, to make you not bored. La. Okay, so uh, in the economic factor, slow aging and thermal and chemical stability in long life cycle. Okay, so apart from the low price, so make sure your whatever that you are purchasing, slow having a slow aging. Slow aging meaning you no need to do frequent maintenance. It can be used for some time. Okay, so certain oil you change. Uh, so that you are changing because it's uh, only under the weight. But you need to do maintenance every two months. Okay, over one year, you need to make six maintenance. Meaning one, one maintenance, you are paying 100. So six maintenance, you are paying 600. For one year. Every two bulan kena buat. So, better you buy a... Uh, uh, higher grade oil. So let's say uh, you are spending 400. Okay, dear maintenance Kali Tower. So you are saving 200. That's what we are calling as slow aging. So meaning it can, you don't need to do maintenance for a certain time. So thermal and chemical stability, I already told you. Thermal is in terms of heat and chemical stability in terms of your viscosity, your elasticity and the chemical compounds inside. Uh, and it must produce a long life cycle. Long life cycle means uh, you can extend the, your, the life of your product uh, or your system. So that's uh, some of the things that involved. Okay, so the next one is on in terms of safety. Okay, so in terms of safety, this is one important stuff. Okay, one important stuff. Uh, so, system U must be safe because it involves human life. Because yang akan operate nanti, 
uh, is an operator, operator or engineer or technician. So it's involved human life. So safety is very important. Tiba-tiba tengah guna, tiba-tiba meletup. Suddenly explode. Suddenly fire happen. Uh, so it, it can cause damage to life. So safety precautions must be taken. So make sure the hydraulic fluid is having a high flash point or uh, in certain cases not inflammable at all. So the first thing, first point is related to fire. The so high flash point meaning so we will uh, learn about this later. So flash point meaning the minimum point for or minimum temperature for uh, fire to happen. As I said earlier, 40 degrees and under 20 degrees. So under 20 degrees are harder to achieve, meaning under 20 degrees is the flash point. So lower flash point is 40 degrees. So meaning reach 40 degrees, terus to baka. So fire start to happen. So having a higher flash point is uh, a must. Okay, it's crucial. And in certain cases, uh, you need to use an oil that impossible to uh, cause fire. Meaning, uh, maybe instead of 120 degrees, uh, 1000 degrees terus. So, memang susah nak achieve lah. So, that kind of thing, uh, maybe it requires more money for you to buy, but it's worth investing. Especially when your system, hydraulic system involves a lot of human life. Human life are priceless. Always imagine your father or mother or your brother or sister or your relatives are working there in your system. So you want them to die. No right. So always create a system that always imagine you're creating a system for your family to work. Make sure no fire happens. So that's one thing. Safety is important. So second, chemically neutral. So not aggressive at all against all material it touches. So chemically neutral meaning, you, in certain case, uh, your hydraulic pipes can leak. So the oil, oil can go out of the pipe that you are using. Uh, so, e even in the event of uh, leakage, to so make sure it don't arm, so it's not aggressive. It, when it leaks, it can go and touch a wood, can touch a metal, so it can touch uh, our human skin or anything uh, anything that is touches, make sure it's chemically neutral. Uh, it's not harmful, uh, meaning it's not corrosive or it's not um, to say it's not causing any chemical reaction. So it's very harmful. It's not any it's chemically neutral. Okay, then uh, another safety low air dissolving uh, capability not inclined to foam formation. Do it. Uh, if low resolving capa capability, it will cause air bubble. The air bubble, uh, if not uh, controlled properly, it will start to uh, form foam. Foam maksudnya buwe lah. The air bubble akan jadi buwe. Okay, so it will be harmful. Lah. You will see this later. Okay, so the next one is environmentally uh, friendly. Okay, environmental friendliness must be ensured. Uh, meaning, after you use the oil, so much money you na dispose the oil. Uh, jangan, uh, PSG, you took up about servicing the kereta, you dah took up minyak, minyak itu tuang kat longkang. So this is what uh, some of the unethical People are doing that to cause environmental disasters, environmental effect. Selalu kita tengok kan dekat news. Okay, this company, so they are 
they are just tending to sungai uh, to the river so it caused a lot of damage it's because inside the uh, river or sea we have uh, more lice okay, we have fish that we consume uh, daily uh, so all the other stuff lah. I think most of us eat fish, right? So, cuba bayangkan that fish drink your hydraulic oil. Then you buying the fish from the market for expensive price, and you are eating it. Indirectly, uh, you are paying for your own destruction. You know, so make sure it's not environmentally harmful. Okay, because you need to produce. You must be a responsible person to create a better world for your children in future. Because you see, uh, you all born in, you all are 20 series, right? UK kids. Okay. So imagine uh, when, when you born, you already like saw so many things. Uh, but it's not available anymore. Even COVID pun satu uh, satu benda yang uh, very how to say put you into captivity, you know. Benda ni tak boleh buat. Benda ni tak boleh buat. So those time boleh lepas dekat kedai mama. At night you no need to put mask, no need to maintain social distance. But now what happened? So we need to be in a control situation. So indirectly, uh, you are under captivity, so meaning dalam uh, kurungan. So di kurung, you know. So you you are no no more free to do anything. So it's because some of the things that other people does. So similarly, make sure your system don't do any harm to the environment, and because it will backfire. Uh, so it will affect us. And also affect our future generation. Okay, so no environmental harm and no toxic toxic effect. So toxic is uh, related to chemical, so chemical disposal, or, or is uh, normally environmental is related to disposal or uh, in terms of leakage or whatever. Make sure no toxic effect. Okay, so any questions so far? Nine o'clock. Yeah, this one. Okay, so if no questions, we will take five. Uh, so now it's nine zero one. So we will come back at nine zero six.
Okay, we'll start again. Are you back? Next slide. Yes, sir. Okay, so properties of hydraulic fluid. So as we see, uh, so these are some of the properties uh, related to hydraulic fluid that you need to check. If we make sure it's uh, having a good lubricity, has a stable viscosity characteristic, good heat dissipation, okay, flash point, okay, I mentioned earlier, a low foam tendency, so meaning the tendency to uh, form foam in a way, okay, fire resistance, okay, so not changing because of uh, heat, to prevent rust formation, corrosion related to corrosion, and non toxic easy to handle and available. This is uh, related to uh, environmental. Okay, so these are some of the properties that involve uh, with hydraulic fluid. We will see one by one. So A, to put publicity, A, uh, you can see, normally the system contains many surfaces which are close contact and which move in relation to each other. So hydraulic system, it has a few, few levels, a uh, uh, few layers, the meaning uh, since it has a lot of components inside, uh, so one component or one surface of the component will will have contact with another component. Uh, so that's what you see, and uh, mostly are uh, involving with things that move. As, uh, even wall spoon, they are the movement. So even actuator spoon are the movement. Uh, even the supply element of the hydraulic system spoon are the movement. Okay, so. Uh, the hydraulic fluid must separate the, uh, and lubricate each surface. So we need, uh, since the nature uh, of the system is hydraulic fluid, so it, hydraulic fluid normally will be in all the uh, empty spaces in your hydraulic system. Uh, meaning, so when you have a small gap in between the surfaces, so it must have a lubrication. So meaning, jangan minyak itu mai terus tak dekat sini, tak boleh masuk celah-celah. Because it's too thick. So no. So make sure it, uh, it provide a good lubricity so it can go in between of all the surfaces and protect the surfaces uh, against wear. So it's a uh, one important stuff. Lah. So it's a principal reason for selecting a fluid having good lubrication characteristic as a hydraulic medium. So uh, it's a, one of the important characteristic uh, of uh, selecting a hydraulic oil. Okay, so be good heat dissipation. Okay, so an important requirement of the fluid is to carry it away from the working parts. So working parts, uh, it can be your actuators or any any part lah ataupun valve. So when uh, it's a requirement, as I said earlier, to carry the heat to the reservoir to be released. Okay, so pressure drops, mechanical frictions, uh, fluid friction, leakage, all these processes generate heat. Okay, you need to understand that. Okay, so especially all the frictions lah. So it will generate heat. The fluid must carry the generator heat away and readily dissipate it to the atmosphere or cooler. So either you channel the heat through the atmosphere, through the reservoir, or you submit it to the coolers, air cooler or water cooler. We started it last week. So you need to have a mechanism to do that. Okay, so therefore, high thermal conductivity and it I specific E values are desirable in the future. Okay, so try to have a high thermal conductivity, uh, meaning uh, it can be operated uh, 
towards a bigger thermal range. Okay, so that's the second point. A flash point. Okay, so it's a popular question in exam also. A flash point. Uh, what is a flash point? So flash point of hydraulic oil is defined as a temperature at which flashes will be generated when oil is brought into contact with any heated method. Uh, so example is uh, HD. Okay, so flash point I, I already explained earlier, so I explained. It's actually a point where fire starts. So flash point adalah satu titik di mana api bermula. If you want to say in Malay lah. Uh, so, so normally all the materials will have a flash point. Either it's a high flash point or low flash point. Kalau low flash point, fire easy to happen. Kalau higher flash point, fire not easy to happen. So low flash point oils are not used as a hydraulic point. Low flash point, absolutely, like room temperature. So let's say uh, 25 degrees, or 30 degrees. So it can be used in other places, like where uh, like cold countries can. Uh, so it can be used maybe like 20 degrees or 30 degrees because the yeah, room temperature is much lower. But in Malaysia, our room temperature is around 27 degrees, 25 to 27 degrees. To so make sure you have at least five times higher, higher flash point. So, will you watch the question? Flash point of a chemical substance is the lowest temperature where enough fluid can evaporate to form a combustible concentration of gas. It's actually what it will happen. Uh, it will evaporation will start to form uh, will reduce the concentration of gas uh, to a point where it can catch fire. Your yeah, flash point is an indication of how easy a chemical may burn. Normally, there's a one point la, where you can check uh, bagaimana chemical to bully burn. Yeah, at what point? How easy? Okay. So material with higher flash points are less flammable and hazardous. A chemical with lower flash points. Uh, these are the things that I said earlier. Okay, D, low foam tendency. Okay, foaming tendency. Foaming, boy. The question is, give an explanation. La, how foam can be dangerous. If foam results from air or other gases becoming entering in the hydraulic fluid. Uh, so meaning, uh, if your hydraulic fluid is exposed to air, environmental air, so uh, what uh, air bubble can enter inside? Kalau you tengok hydraulic fluid dalam pipe yang lutsina, the transparent pipe, so is there any bubbles inside? So, you can see. If there is a bubble, too, after some time, it will start to uh, have foam. The air enters the hydraulic system through the reservoir and through air leaks within the system. The uh, air can be entered through the reservoir. Uh, if your pipe has a leakage, uh, so air can enter. The hydraulic fluid under high pressure can contain a large volume of dissolved or dispersed air bubbles. When the fluid is uh, deep pressurized, the air bubbles expand and produce foam. So this is the condition, la, so, uh, the process that happens. So when it's high pressure, it still uh, stay as a bubble. Okay, at one part, uh, one part of your system, Tiba -tiba depressurize. Maksudnya, from high pressure, tiba -tiba become low pressure, air bubbles will become foam. Uh, they expand then and become foam. Okay, because of its compressibility and poor lubricating properties, foam can be seriously affect, uh, seriously affect the 
operation and replication of machinery. Uh, so cuba bayangkan, because is is compressible, is compressible. So buih kan, uh, you tekan je dia hilang, and it is not providing any lubricating. Because if hydraulic oil, they provide lubrication. Uh, if bubble, uh, so it is not providing any lubrication. So because no lubrication and uh, is not useful. Uh, it seriously can damage your system. That's why uh, once you detect an air bubble or foam, immediately you need to have a mechanism to remove it. Okay, so that's a very important stuff. Lah. The proper foam inhibitors modify the surface tension of the air bubbles so they uh, more easily break up. Uh, Foam inhibitors meaning uh, so you have uh, some kind of like a chemical added to your system or hydraulic oil to introduce uh, so that uh, all these air bubbles that trap inside your system can come to the surface, okay, uh, especially in the reservoir, uh, come to the surface. So once you come to the surface, they easily uh, break up. The molecule to pacha and it will become like a normal air. So that's uh, some mechanism that you need to introduce. Okay, so E fire resistance. I think uh, you understood this point. So resistance to fire lah. So no, fire not easily happen. So fire resistance is one of the properties that is optional in a, a good usable hydraulic fluid. Any yeah, optional is not really um, one thing like it depends on the environment actually where you work and where you want to apply your hydraulic system and if hydraulic system is uh, deployed in fire prone area uh, then you need to have a fire resistance so you as an engineer you need to de decide whether this thing is crucial or not okay, so the commonly used hydraulic fluid are petroleum derivatives so petroleum derivative meaning is uh, produced from a petroleum process. Well, you think of petroleum process, uh, it has a lot of uh, stages. A stage uh, above the produce petroleum, okay, uh, 95. Yeah, stage N provides 97, any produce 100, any produce kerosene. So uh, some stages, it produces uh, some petroleum derivatives which are related to hydraulic fluid. Uh, and consequently, they burn vigorously once they pass the flash point. That's what it says. Lah. So, since it's a uh, petroleum base, at one point, they misty a tobacco. So, make sure it's suitable for your system or your environment. And also fire resistance if necessary. For critical application, artificial or synthetic hydraulic fluid are used, which have high fire resistances, various grade of fluid with higher water content. So I am pointing the bagita. So instead of using a petroleum derivative, you also can consider using an artificial hydraulic fluid. So meaning uh, it's not from the petroleum base, so it's from any other source. Lah. So it can be from the natural source uh, or it can be a synthetic. Synthetic meaning is a chemical base. So chemically uh, human made, lah. human made hydraulic oil based on the chemicals. Yeah, there, there are some artificial or synthetic hydraulic oil uh, or hydraulic fluid also available okay in the market but as usual um, it will be expensive lah. Okay. some of the synthetic oil uh, like the one that you use in the car so that's why you always heard this semi-synthetic oil or fully synthetic oil so meaning it's not petroleum based so it is uh, from uh, from uh, chemical yeah, you can put chemical, chemical name. 
So at the end, it become like a hydraulic oil good that you can use. That's the one thing. Okay, so F, stable viscosity characteristics. So viscosity is a measure of uh, hydraulic fluid's resistance to flow. I think you already know what is a viscosity from your turbo fluid. Okay, so whatever fluid that uh, having resistance to flow, meaning it will cause friction, uh, meaning it's having a high viscosity. Okay, so it can have a significant impact on the operation of the system uh, because your oil can be low viscous or, or too thin or it can be high viscous. So both are having some consequences. Okay, so if your hydraulic oil is too thin or having a low viscosity, uh, it will not hold the friction or the surface properly. So after some time, it can cause leakage or um, it will uh, cause wear or tear in the parts. Okay, so imagine uh, if for this condition, imagine instead of hydraulic oil, you are using water in the system. It will cause leakage and it will not produce any oil, uh, oil or lubricating uh, facilities for your system. Okay, so that's uh, when the oil is having a low viscosity. And if the oil is too thick or having a high viscosity, the fluid will be more difficult to form through the system. Okay, and may reduce operating efficiency. Okay, so difficult to pump is about uh, too thick. So it must be in a certain concentration for it to be pumped efficiently. So kalau dia terlalu keras atau terlalu tebal, too thick. Uh, so uh, it can uh, you, your pump cannot like. Uh, Pump it efficiently to the system. So the little look at us. Okay, so it it will reduce your operating efficiency. So that's one you need to understand. Yeah? Okay, so I, all hydraulic fluid must be able to retain optimal viscosity during the operation in cold and hot temperature. Okay, so temperatures plays a very big role okay, uh, in maintaining the optimum viscosity. So if you are in a hot climate uh, countries, so make sure your hydraulic fluid can maintain its optimum viscosity at the room temperature. Okay, and uh, cold countries, so like how uh, I said last last week, so normally they will have an uh, additive inside, okay, and they call it as an antifreeze. Okay, so antifreeze will make sure the fluid will be in an optimum viscosity, even at the polar environment. Okay, so, so those are the things that you need to uh, understand. So the main thing is, you must make sure the viscosity of the oil to be stable. You know, that's your role uh, in determining the uh, proper oil. Okay, so G, prevent rust formation. Yeah, rust, I think you know. All right. It's pollution. In many systems, water can enter as a condensation and contamination and mix with hydraulic oil. Water can cause rusting of hydraulic component. Because uh, when water comes in, uh, because of, uh, depends on the density, la, the density of the, so at times water will go to the surface. Uh, so allow, uh, lubrication you want to uh, lubrication to happen so instead of oil the so water will be on the top or it will be either way so either way it will be in touch the water will be in touch with uh, some surface uh, which can cause uh, rust to form okay, so uh, in addition water can react with some additive to form chemical species which can be aggressive to yellow metal. 
So yellow metal normally we call uh, brass. Okay, B R A S S. Okay, uh, brass. Okay, brass. Okay, so it can be uh, like a metal, uh, like uh, bronze. Okay, bronze uh, we call it as a yellow metal also. Okay, which can be um, alloy. Okay, we call it as an alloy. Uh, so I think you are familiar with uh, all this term. Okay, so uh, water can react with uh, some of this um, material to form, uh, and it can be dangerous um, for some of uh, these metals. Uh, is a, so you need to understand that. Okay, so hydraulic oil formulation contains rust and pollution inhibitors which prevent the interaction of water and other chemical uh, species uh, from attacking metal surface. So you need to add uh, another additive at the phone inhibitors, it appears inhibitors. Okay, so just specifically to prevent rust or pollution. Yeah. Okay, so H, so non toxic, easy to handle and available. So it's uh, related to environmental. Okay, so make sure it's not hazardous and toxic for human, animal, and also plants. Okay, so you need to make sure that you know, it's your social responsibility as an engineer. Okay, so these characteristics refer to interaction of the fuel with people who repair. Okay, so always imagine uh, one of your family members are doing that. Let's say your father, your mother, they, they are the one who are repairing and you do want them to uh, have any, uh, any injuries or damage. Okay. Obviously, it is desirable the fluid be as simple to handle and as available and cheap as possible. Okay, so you need to always consider this in your design. Uh, so how you want to dispose the hydraulic oil once it finished. Make sure the process is simple, easier to handle, so meaning easier to be removed, or easier to be easier to be disposed. Okay, and it's cheap. So that's one thing that you need to understand. Okay, so any questions so far? This is all then. Yes? No, no question. No question. We move on to the last part of the slide. So accumulator. So earlier we saw about hydraulic pumps. Then we saw about hydraulic oil. How to select. And now we move to the last part of component. So which is the accumulator. So accumulator from the name we know. We need to accumulate something. Compose. Compose something. Okay, so... Hydraulic accumulator is an accessory of an hydraulic system. So uh, you can use this in your hydraulic system. Now, hydraulic system accumulator is a pressure storage reservoir in which a, a non compressible hydraulic fluid is held under pressure by an external source. Okay, so, this uh, the function of accumulator is similar like a uh, reservoir. A reservoir normally it will have uh, your hydraulic oil okay, for any emergency. The accumulator is uh, similar like the reservoir, in, but instead of storing the oil, it is storing uh, the oil with a certain pressure. Okay, so uh, that's the requirement of accumulator. Yes, because. Um, when your hydraulic system need to use the hydraulic fluid at a certain pressure. Okay, so if suddenly there's a pressure drop in a part of your hydraulic system, 
the accumulator will supply the backup immediately. So that's the function of your hydraulic accumulator. So it's actually a pressure storage reservoir in which a non-compressible hydraulic fluid is held under pressure by an external source. The external source, much like your power bank, power bank external source, and you uh, you charge and keep. So when there's a shortage, you immediately plug into your uh, home or your system. Give extra power, uh, similar. So hydraulic accumulator is having a pressure storage. The external source can be a spring, yes. so you can uh, keep in a condition. Um, yeah, the, uh, it's actually external source uh, is a, a, a component which will create the pressure. Yeah, yeah, pressure. Okay, so you can use a spring. So spring, I, I think in pneumatic you already saw potential of a spring. So spring can create a potential energy. Um, so this is uh, based on mechanical. Uh, by nat uh, natural, okay, by natural, uh, you can have a weight. Okay. How a raised weight can cause pressure? Because of what? Raised raised weight yeah our weight can uh, cause pressure anyone have the idea raised weight how we can uh, produce pressure Uh, what is the principle behind this? Okay, like spring, we know because you compress a spring, it will store a potential energy inside. Our raised weight can uh, create pressure. Uh, maybe it's based on the principle of uh, F equals MA. If the weight is higher, the force must be higher. So the pressure it increases. Okay, so what creates creating the force? Uh the what the mass, the mass of the Okay, the, the mass, mass of the raised raised weight. Okay, then uh behind that, what is the nature of the raised weight? Because of what? Uh what create creating the weight? Mm. Maybe what pressure? Okay, so the weight is creating a pressure because of what? Okay, so you, I think you have studied this in your thermal fluid first chapter last time. Why a raised weight in in Earth and also Moon not the same? Because in your in Moon, your weight is. Even though your your weight is under kg, in in moon it's only one over six. So what actually creating this weight? Gravitational force. Yeah, gravitational force. So this is actually using uh, spring is is caused by a mechanical, and raised weight is because of gravity, uh, which is the nature. Okay, and a compressed air, a compressed gas. Okay, so there are three mechanisms. Okay, so mechanical, uh, gravity, and also compressed gas is is based on uh, human made. Okay, so natural and human made. Okay, so an accumulator enables a hydraulic system to cope with extreme of demand using a less powerful pump. Okay, so less powerful to respond more quickly to a temporary demand and to smooth out pulsation. So pulsation meaning uh, when there is uh, no supply, suddenly, uh, suddenly uh, 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 it will cause jerk in the system. Sudden, sudden shot of supply. Okay, so it will cause a pulsation. 
So you want to smooth out, you immediately you need to uh, send uh, supply uh, as a temporary demand. So accumulator is actually a type of energy storage device which stores the pressure or uh, the hydraulic energy. So that's the function of accumulator. So types of uh, hydraulic accumulator. Okay, so we have three types, okay, weighted accumulator, spring-loaded accumulator, and gas charge accumulator. So this is practically based on the external source uh, we saw earlier. So the external source, we have spring, raised weight, and also comp compressed gas. So the type of accumulator is uh, related to this. Okay. Okay, weight loaded type of accumulator. Okay, so as we saw earlier, it's because of the gravity. So it's using a natural weight okay, uh, due to gravity. So this is the oldest type of accumulator because I believe it's used uh, last time we don't have spring and we don't have gas also. Uh, we have gas, but we don't have a mechanism to use gas. Uh, in like in uh, the modern world. Yeah, so those time we have mostly uh, related to mechanical. So it's uh, related to uh, nature. So even the water system, uh, so it's using a mechanical. So water supply, everything are related. Water dam, so uh, it's uh, related uh, to environment. So, weight loaded type is the oldest type of accumulator. So, this consists of a vertical heavy steel cylinder which incorporates a piston with packing to prevent leakage. So, the dead weight is attached to the top of the piston. The force of gravity of the dead weight provides the potential energy in the accumulator. So, the main disadvantage of this accumulator is. is Large size and heavy weights make it unsuitable for mobile equipment. Okay, so, uh, as you can see here, so you are using a dead weight. Dead weight meaning is a loose weight, which can you can detach from a system, like your dumbbell. Right? Dumbbell you normally will have a weight attached. You can move, you can remove from the system whenever you want. So you can have this. Uh, so let's say it's a one kg or two kgs of weight. So you put on top of something to create the pressure. So that's what we are seeing here. So we are attaching this on on top of the piston uh, because of the gravity. So it will pr produce a potential energy in the accumulator. And uh, the main disadvantage is the size uh, and the heavy weight. Because we want to uh, utilize, we uh, as we saw last week, we have stationary system as well as uh, mobile system, mobile hydraulics, and also stationary hydraulics. So we want uh, it's not suitable for maybe it's suitable for stationary system, but it's not uh, used. It can be used for mobile, uh, like your excavator or crane. So you cannot use that. So that's one of the disadvantages. Okay, so this is the system, okay, weight loaded accumulator. So you have oil, so which is trapped in a system. And you have a, this is actually a piston concept, and you put weight on top. Okay, how, how much weight you put depends on the, the size of the system. No? So if the system is large, you don't put one kg, it's not enough. So maybe you need to put one ton to create the piston movement. So when there's a weight, so this thing will move downwards and it will start to create. So that's uh, one type. Okay, so spring loaded, same concept. Okay, so instead of weight, you are using spring. spring so similar, so when you compress it, when you have oil inlet, 
okay this is a uh, opposite direction eh? so when you have oil in the the spring will be compressed and it will be produce a pressure inside that's how a spring loaded accumulator works and gas charge accumulator so this is popular type la nowadays because it can be man made right so uh, you have a few types la few types and lighter type there is actually the construction of it so you have a piston type and also diaphragm type uh, so the most popular is the bladder type because it's commonly available uh, so bladder accumulator a feature fast response less than 25 millisecond max maximum gas compression ratio of about 14 to 1 and a maximum flow rate of 50 liters per second so this popular type because of its fast response popular um because it can supply within 25 millisecond this again is less than one one second la so there is a shortage immediately it will send so maybe the other accumulator will, will take a few seconds to send and the gas compression so immediately it can compress so 14 times i can compress at one go okay and it can supply up to 15 liters per second so which is very very good okay, so you can see here the type so all three types so the blue color is your gas your gas we are using a gas uh, to produce so a gas charge and uh, you are using gas so imagine you supply more gas it will expand and it will push push the uh, when it expand it will create a lesser a lesser space inside the body uh, which will uh, cause uh, the potential energy inside so diaphragm type so similar uh, similar uh, it will be attached to your your storage uh, tank so when it expand it will create a Potential energy inside, and this is a piston type. So it will, piston will move. Okay. So when the gas enters, the piston move downward, and it will create a potential energy. So try to imagine how the system uh, preserve the pressure or create the pressure. Okay. So for the last slides. Okay, the advantage of the hydraulic system. So popular question. So what are what are the advantage of hydraulic system? The hydraulic system uses incompressible fluid, which result in higher efficiency. It has higher efficiency, and naturally, hydraulic system has higher efficiency. So it delivers consistent power output, which is difficult in pneumatic and mechanical system. Consistent power output because You have uh, additional comp uh, co additional uh, components which produce immediate backup, uh, like accumulator. Uh, so it produces a consistent power output uh, and also large power output, lah, uh, because it can operate until 800 bar. Yeah. Uh, so larger force it can uh, manage. So hydraulic system employ high uh, density incompressible fluid. possibility of leakage is less because it's not like water or gas where you can leak so at times uh, smaller holes will not have leakage because of the viscosity of the liquid this is the so the maintenance cost is lesser lesser so the system perform well in hot environment condition So even though it's a uh, harmful, a fire can happen, but normally the hydraulic uh, system has all the precaution, okay, and the temperature range which is suitable to work in hot environment. 
Yes, so disadvantage of the hydraulic system so the material of storage tank, piping, cylinder, and piston can be corroded with the hydraulic fluid. Okay, so corrosion can happen because of the water. Water suddenly enters the system. So therefore, one must be careful when selecting materials and hydraulic fluid. Uh, so I always suggest to use the best uh, hydraulic fluid. So it's okay if you spend a little bit more, but it can last longer. The structural weight and size of the system is more, which makes it unsuitable for smaller instruments. Now, normally the hydraulic system will be used to do a larger works. Okay, so you want to use that in a smaller system. So it's uh, is not suitable. Okay, even you want to use in the smaller instrument also. Like very minor role. Okay. Small impurities in the hydraulic fluid can permanently damage the complete system. Therefore, one should be careful and suitable filter must be installed. Okay, so small impurities meaning a small metal piece, or small particles in the hydraulic fluid, it can cause a damage. And damage to the system. So you need to filter it efficiently. It is uh, one important rule. The leakage of hydraulic fluid is also a critical issue and suitable prevention method and seal must be adopted. It's a leakage. Leakage, as I say, so if the oil, uh, the hydraulic oil is toxic, so it can cause a lot of damage to human, animal, and also plants, and also the environment. So you need to manage the leakage properly. So leakage also can cause fire, a lot of uh, issues. Okay, so you need to have a suitable prevention method uh, and you, you need to use a proper seal in order to prevent all these things. Okay, and, and the last point, the hydraulic fluid, if not properly uh, disposed properly, can be harmful to the environment. Okay, so you normally you cannot uh, you cannot like dispose it to the environment. You, you either you need to chemically uh, reduce its level to uh, acceptable level, or if you cannot manage it, you need to collect it and hand over to the vendor. So they will uh, have a proper disposal system. Okay, so I think uh, that's all for chapter seven. Is there any question? Here, uh, nine forty-seven. So we have ten minutes. Is there any questions that you want to ask? So, sir. Yes. Basically, uh, pneumatic system is about speed, and hydraulic system is about um, power. Is that it? Power and also precision. Mm -hmm. So pneumatic is fast but not precise. So hydraulic is slow but precise. Uh, oh, okay. It has it has its advantage and disadvantage like how we saw. Uh, so you cannot like pneumatic you can still use for smaller component instruments. Uh, but um, hydraulic cannot really use suitable to be used in a smaller component. Uh, so smaller instruments. So you can uh, decide based on uh, your application where you want to use. Uh, so obviously the, the obvious advantage is the force. Okay, because pneumatic only can use up to 10 bars uh, and uh, hydraulic can be used until 800 bar. Which really say the operation range of the system. Group system. Both as an advantage. So normally engineers, what they will do, they will mix and match. So certain things that you can use hydraulic, you use hydraulic. So like like your electronumatic, your electrical with pneumatic, your hybrid, so you can do more things. So if there's a possibility of combining pneumatic and hydraulic together, maybe you can create a new more 
hydraulic system uh, and just uh, mix and mix in order to create a better efficient system. So, one more time. Yes? Uh, this is a random random question, but do, do nowadays uh, cars still use this hydraulic system for steering? Hydraulic system for? Steering. Steering. Yeah, a car steering. Car steering. Steering or stealing? Uh, steering. Stealing. Sorry. No, no, no. Steering. S T E E R I N G. Yeah, yeah. As I, as you saw in the first part of uh, chapter seven, uh, they. The, the car steering is actually using hydraulic system. Hydraulic brakes. Uh, so all are using hydraulic in the car. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's why you use a less uh, effort to turn. So that's a power steering concept, which uh, was not available in the older cars. So normally in the car, the obvious one is uh, the brakes and also the steering. Uh, you can refer to the last week's uh, part. La. Uh, if I uploaded the lecture notes. In the beginning, yeah, the vehicle power steering. You can see here uh, the hydraulic system is how. Uh, uh, steering is connected to the hydraulic pumps and also the hydraulic control the steering of the wheel uh, as well as the braking. Yeah. Braking, it can be in any, any not only cars, it can be train or any, any system which use the hydraulic uh, system to apply brakes. Is there any other question? Okay, so if you don't have any questions, so again, we will stop uh, here today. So tomorrow we will have lab. Okay, so next week we will enter to uh, lecture week, uh, study lecture week, lecture week number 11. So we still have another one more month to cover the whole thing. Okay, so as you all know, we don't have final exam. We will uh, we'll still go for good book exam. Okay, so prepare yourself. And because we don't have final exam, so I need to add more assessments in the upcoming month. I totally understand you will be entering month. And uh, we'll, at the end, since we are doing EAA, so you will have a lot of assignments this uh, one month. Okay, so I will try to give things uh, as soon as possible okay, because um, all these components that replacing the final exam must be double vetted. The process is a bit longer. So I will try to create an assignment uh, which requires presentation. Okay, and also the open book exam. The open book exam, I think I propose 30 marks and uh, the assignment will be 20 marks, which cover the 50% of final exam. So be prepared. So I try to simplify the course as much as possible so that you won't have fatigue. I think I'm giving enough materials also. All the videos I am uploading in YouTube and I'm trying to give in a puzzle for you to listen back. Uh, and even the lecture videos I am uploading weekly. So all sir, yeah. sir, yes, yes. Uh, so the assignment is just questions, basically, right? No, it won't be too easy. Is that uh, because I think it's easier to give assignment for this subject. I just give a complex design question. And I let you design and come up with the report and also presentation. 
present the the solution. But I won't give a too easy question. So it's not like your tutorial question. It will be a bit like you need to put some effort lah in order to design and to show me what you have conducted. So normally uh, it will take easily two to three weeks. Because I consider you have other subjects to cover as well. Okay, so any other question? You don't have to recreate the thing, right? You just have to design it, right? Yeah, but you need to come up with the solution, right? The steps and and yeah, I I I can promise you it won't be too easy. Yes, you can design, but you still need some effort. How do you will just uh you do right? Any other question? Okay, so I just uh telling this as a announcement, three announcement uh, so, so what you can expect for another one month. So try to prepare yourself. Okay, so in order to score. So I think all the while you're uh, doing well. Okay, so try to maintain the momentum uh, to score good grades. Okay, so I think that's all for me. So we will finish with this. Okay, so tomorrow I will see group two for lab. Okay, so this week we have uh, two groups of presentation. One with Panusna and one with myself. Okay, so uh, prepare and uh, try to present according. Okay, so thank you so much. We'll see you uh, next week. Thank you, sir.